It's time for our first major maintenance on our Tesla Model Y. It's been about a year of ownership, just 11 months and 20,000 miles. We did some big road trips with this vehicle to rack up more miles than normal, and it's time for tires. So 20,000 miles is pretty early for tires. If you pay attention to the automotive news, you can see there's been a lot of articles as electric vehicles become more and more common, especially Teslas. Um, that they go through tires quicker than normal with normal internal combustion engine vehicles. And just to clarify, we're going to do rear tires only on our Tesla. That is because the front tires are in good shape. They probably will last to 40,000 miles. So there's a couple different factors on why do these electric vehicles go through tires faster than internal combustion engines. And one thing that people say all the time is, oh, it's the weight. They're a lot heavier than conventional internal combustion cars. And honestly, as an engineer, and as somebody who can look up the weight of vehicles, that makes my brain melt. This Tesla Model Y all-wheel drive is the same exact weight as a Ford Edge. It's competitor with the same size. This is just over 4,000 pounds. The Ford Edge is just over 4,000 pounds. That is not why the tires wear out. If we think about the equation, force equals mass times acceleration, Really what wears tires out is the amount of force we're putting through them. And so mass, we said is equal, it's the acceleration. So electric vehicles can accelerate much faster than their normal internal combustion engines. The counterpart, so the Ford Edge base engine has 275 pound-feet of torque, and that is um, up in the RPM range. Pound-feet of torque available from this dual motor setup in the Tesla is available at zero speed and it's a flat torque curve all the way. So your maximum torque is available for a long time. And so the acceleration performance of this is much more like a sports car. In fact, a Corvette did not match the acceleration of this family car, electric family car until the late teens. The newest iteration with the, with the mid engine rear drive um, is faster than these, but this is just a, a middle of the road dual motor setup for a Model Y. If you, if you look at the Plaid or performance versions, um, they, they beat most performance sports cars. And so if you think about that in that context, um, sports cars are known to go through tires very quickly. Why? Because of that high acceleration rates they're able to. Now you can save those tires by driving very conservatively. And I'll be honest, uh, when we first got this vehicle, I wanted to test out the performance, so I drove like a maniac. Uh, that's part of the reason why the rear tires um, are only lasting about 20,000 miles. The other thing is I got a nail in one of the tires and I did a temporary, I did a plug. Um, so I don't trust that to go on a road trip or anything, so I wanna replace those tires. So I know I'm talking a lot, we wanna to get to replacing these tires, but one more thing, um, conventional internal combustion engine cars were used to the front tires wearing out faster uh, because most of those vehicles have iterated over the front drive, and that's because the weight of the engine is the front, so you wanna take advantage of that weight and the traction available. These electric cars, specifically Teslas, have about a perfect 50-50 weight balance, so they've gone back to making them rear drive bias and the smaller motors in the front just to give added traction in adverse weather conditions or in that extreme acceleration performance um, so you don't spin the tires. So the rear tires here have worn out much faster than the front. We'll take a look at those, but the front, like I said, I think will make it about 40,000 miles or about halfway. The, the back are pretty much gone. And that's a couple reasons. It's rear biased when you're taking off and accelerating faster. It's also rear biased when you're braking, which is exact opposite of most braking systems, the reason this is rear biased during braking is because the vast majority of the braking that you do with one pedal driving, that's where you're only using the accelerator pedal you let off, it's automatically uh, regenerating that electricity back into the motor system. The permanent magnet motor is responsible for that regenerative piece and that is in the rear. The front is an induction motor. It can't do the same amount of regeneration as the back. So your stopping is rear bias. So the, the vast amount of force for this vehicle, unless you're uh, cornering really aggressively, is in the rear tires. 
So if we think about that, front tire is about half used, rear tires are fully used. Rotate your tires! Yeah, should have rotated the tires, right? Is that guy right? Well, that would probably get the entire set maybe to 30,000 miles and you could spread the wear out evenly throughout that. But this is kind of a pain, it's a lot of work. Um, I'm choosing just to let them wear naturally and then replace the tires that wore as they wear out. So I'm not having to do all four of them at the same time, just doing two. You can't do that! You can't do that! You gotta replace all four at the same time so they're the right yes. diameter. In conventional vehicles, where you have an engine and a transmission transferring power to the rear drive and the front drive through mechanical linkage, that is true. You don't want the diameter of your front tires and your rear tires differently. You don't want the diameter of your front tires and rear tires significantly different because the transfer case has some slip in it, but you will wear out the slip clutches in that if you're running significantly different. Now it can be debatable whether or not wear is a significant enough difference in tire diameter to make that, but most tire shops and car dealers will not let you do that. They won't do that. They'll say, well, we're not gonna do that because it's gonna wear out your drivetrain. That's the reason why the diameter difference makes a speed mismatch front and rear and can wear out the transfer case. Electric vehicles are way different. We have an independent motor in the front and the back, so there's no mechanical link between the two. And we can get away with different diameters because those motors use their electronic brains to speed match between the front and the back. I don't recommend going wildly different. There's parameters in the software that if you exceed them, uh, it's not gonna be happy and it's gonna throw warning lights. But between where, the small difference in diameter that wear makes, will not be a problem on these vehicles. So I'm choosing, reduce the amount of work I have to do on a normal time, take it in somewhere to rotate your tires. I'm gonna make an appointment, sit around for a half hour while they rotate the tires, no thanks. I'm gonna just address the tires as they wear, no big deal. Before pulling off my existing tires, I had to clean off this rim protector. I did a separate video on that. Uh, provides some protection on the rims, but not great. Because I like a challenge, I've always wanted to do my tire service in my own garage. So I upgraded my tools and did that for this case for my Model Y. I've got a separate link to a video in the description that details that process. With the driver's side rear tire off, we can see there are the wear indicators that are inside these water grooves and when the tread wears down to that point, it's time to replace it. So they're not at that point yet. They could probably go another couple thousand miles. But like I said, on the passenger side, I had to put a plug in, so it's time I'm gonna replace them. Now, when I'm looking for new tires, the first place I tend to go is Walmart. I check the usual suspects in addition to walmart.com, Amazon, tire rack, things like that, but I found time and time again, Walmart tends to have the best value in tires. Normally, I tend to select Goodyear. Uh, they seem to be a good sweet spot between tire specifications and price, but in this part, I wanted to try something a little bit different and go for the extreme value. I never really tried out one of these Asian manufacturers, but here if we go to Walmart website and sort by price, there is a $99 tire made by Radar. And this was intriguing. So if we click on it, we can see it meets all the specifications for our Tesla Model Y, and it has very good reviews. In addition to that, if we drill down into the tire specifications, it actually has a very good uniform tire rating. This can be a little difficult to find on most websites. You have to search around a bit and even here I'm having a trouble finding it but if we go down into the tire description and click on more details and scroll down a bit it will give us that rating. That's the UTGQ and this number is treadwear, so the 600 is treadwear, and then the A is traction and 
temperature ratings of the tires. So this has the best rating for temperature and traction along with a decent tread wear rating, rating of 600. If we drop the zero from the 600, it gives us approximate miles. So 600 turns into 60,000 miles of approximate tread wear. So I went ahead and purchased these radar tires. Here they are after delivery. And I will say the quality on them looks just as good as the Continental tires that are on the vehicle. I cannot notice any deficiencies on them at all visually. Um, and that tread wear rating is 600 on these. On the stock Continental is 400. So these are 50% better for tread wear. So they should last in the same conditions, uh, about 10,000 miles more, 30,000 miles instead of 20. So I went through the process of swapping these out at home. They balanced up very good. Um, there was no measurable imbalance difference between the Continental tires and the new radar tires. The one difference um, for EV specific tires, they put a foam on the inside diameter of the tire to absorb road noise and try to make them a little quieter. So that was one big thing I paid attention to on the test drive to see if there was any difference between the OEM tires and these cheaper radar tires. They are made in Thailand, says on the tire. That was one thing it doesn't say on the website, but let's see how they perform. So the OEM Continental tires have what they call this quiet technology and refer to it as foam inside the tire. You can see I ended up cutting that tire off the rim so I could pull it off easily and then show you inside the tire there's this foam glued on to absorb road noise. So there really is nothing special about electric vehicle tires other than the inclusion of this foam because you don't have engine noise so they don't want the tire noise overwhelming the driving experience and then just generally low rolling resistance to maximize range. First road test with the new tires. At city speed so far I do not feel any imbalance and the tire noise may be a touch more but I'm also really listening to it without the radio on and everything so um, not really a noticeable difference. Let's go out on the highway. Up to highway speed. Smoothness and overall cornering and handling of the tires. No big difference. Uh, so they pass that good. There's, like I said, just even on the highway, maybe a slight increase in tire noise. But I'm really listening for it and I don't have the radio on. So it's not something I normally do. Uh, but definitely not something where I'd say don't, don't buy the tires it does not make that big of a difference. I think that foam does do something, but it's not a big lever. It's just a, a small fine tuning of, of maybe uh, killing some noise, but overall not worth spending 150% more on tires to get a piece of foam on the inside of them. I'm, I'm happy they pass. Thanks for watching. Adios.